What would it be like to be on the moon? A question that has intrigued men since long before the invention of the telescope. To travel across the roughly marked surface of our nearest neighbor in space is an experience that men will soon be having. Probably before this decade is over, the first explorers from Earth will have arrived on the moon. But how will they explore a planet without roads, without atmosphere, with gravity, only one-sixth that of Earth? Scientists are studying answers to these questions. First, by gathering information on the conditions that will likely be found on the moon, then by developing new concepts of travel for vehicles such as we have never seen on Earth to cross terrain that is unique to the moon. The research starts in a laboratory. Here, the vacuum conditions found on the moon are studied for the effect they will have on lunar soil. The large bell jar has been pumped down to a very high vacuum. Inside is a device that is designed to measure the strength of soil. At its base, there are two disks of different sizes and an annular ring. The disks are pushed straight down into the soil and both the vertical force applied and the penetration are measured. This tells something about how much weight the soil will be able to bear. In this case, the soil used is pumice, which is believed to be similar to certain lunar soils. A second test involves the annular ring, or shear ring, as it's called. A known load is applied at the top, and then the ring is twisted. The horizontal force being developed and the angle of rotation are both measured. This tells us something about the amount of traction a vehicle can develop. Here, the same test is shown being applied to a gravel soil under similar conditions. Another effect which is studied is that of low gravity, here being tested on a free-falling device known as an Atwood-type machine. It reveals what happens to a soil in gravity only one-sixth that of Earth, where 100 pounds weighs only 16. Here, a soil test disk is shown being attached to a release. When the test is actually run, this disk will be released into a capsule of soil which is falling at an acceleration which simulates the low lunar gravity. The entire device is raised high into the air, then dropped. During the drop, though so rapidly it could not be seen, the soil test disk is released and the effect of low gravity on soil is measured. Based on such tests of soil properties, several vehicle models designed for moon travel were developed. Here is a vehicle based on the Archimedean screw principle, propelled by the turning of four large screws. This wheeled vehicle rolls on six large soft tires arranged on three axles. And this track-type vehicle is composed of two units with wraparound tracks. These vehicles were tested in a soil bin, containing soils of a type likely to be encountered on the lunar surface. Here, the tracked vehicle is made to crawl over simulated dunes of fine pumice. The wraparound tracks are elastic, with flexible prongs to conform to the terrain while steering at the pivot between the units. The Archimedean screw vehicle is designed to operate only where the soil is so soft that it cannot support the weight of a vehicle. Hence, it burrows through the soil. It is steered by running the various screw elements at different speeds, managing slow but effective turns. The electric cord trailing behind it is used to deliver power to the model. It is not intended for actual moon vehicles, which will use batteries or fuel cells. Generally, the screw principle is not very efficient and would be used only for special applications, such as this exceedingly soft soil.
The wheeled vehicle is mechanically the most efficient and reliable of the three designs. While it cannot perform as well as a track on soft ground, its many other advantages make it an attractive solution to the problem of an all-around moon vehicle. This particular model has three axles or units, individually driven by three separate electric motors. The axles are connected to each other by elastic rods, which enable the units to dip and roll with respect to one another. Steering is accomplished by the small steering motors mounted on the front and rear units. The wheels shown on this model are made of foam rubber, but this would not be the case for a real moon vehicle, since foam rubber could never endure the severe lunar temperatures. Instead, a full-size design might feature lightweight wire frames, which would be covered with a thin, tough plastic material. In case the lunar surface does not turn out to be a fine dust, but instead consists of a rough and rocky terrain, the wheeled vehicle will perhaps show itself to its best advantage. The individually powered units have good obstacle climbing ability, even when the obstacles are more than twice the height of the wheels. The vehicle can force itself over and around boulders, yet always hug the terrain because of its special design, which is called articulated. If obstacles such as chasms occur, such as the space between boulders, the vehicle will bridge the obstacle with its long body. Where one unit has lost traction and cannot pull, the others will push it along. In turn, if they lose traction, they will be pulled along so that the vehicle remains in motion whatever the soil or terrain. In general, the wheeled vehicle seems a promising solution to the problem of moon travel. Yet much work remains to be done. Further and more realistic, testing in the moon environment must still be accomplished. New moon vehicles will be conceived, designed, and put through their paces so that the astronauts of tomorrow will have the vehicles to carry them safely to the farthest reaches of the moon.